Youth Entertainment Technology Center. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this talk requires a, a very uh, substantial level of French. I forgot to tell you that. Uh, okay, so just a quick introduction on me. Um, I'm sort of a weird bird of, of being a data scientist and a uh, complex systems expert. I've done a lot of strategy consulting and, and I've uh, done sales and biz dev for, for data companies, including Bolognos and, and Ranker. Um, the Entertainment Technology Center is a really interesting um, organization. It's a think tank where Hollywood uh, meets uh, technology and discusses technology, anything from digital distribution to uh, VR, uh, cloud computing, and, and data and analytics. I run the data and analytics project there that seeks to uh, accelerate the deployment of data and analytics solutions throughout uh, studio operations. So we're going to talk about how that's going. Also the CEO of an AI engineer group called Novamente. I have the pleasure of working with uh, two of the uh, best data scientists and, and AI engineers in the world. Ben Kurzold, who's the um, uh, the father of the Open Computer Platform, and uh, Gian Gonzaga, who uh, led R&D at Netflix and eHarmony and, and did uh, uh, data science history twice at these, uh, at these companies. So we uh, do a lot of uh, uh, high-end um, AI system deployments for uh, DARPA, the Department of Defense, Lockheed like Martin, Intel, uh, also some ad agencies. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so um, how is a big problem? Right. So, actually, several big problems. Uh, problem number one, if you look to the left, um, how is a B2B business? Uh, it doesn't sell to you guys, it sell, or, or me, it sells to theater chains and, and home entertainment companies. And um, in a lot of ways, it doesn't really have a lot of uh, data on its clients and customers. Um, and, and it's really a, a, a huge problem. The second, uh, uh, biggest problem is that in entertainment and in content, uh, the uh, supply far outweighs the demand. So leisure time is actually flat and, and actually declining, and there's only 24 hours in a day. However, the supply of entertainment content and experiences that we have to entertain ourselves is exploding. Uh, so that's a huge problem. So that's what you see on the right. It means that for you know every single unit of time, people uh, seek to uh, uh, maximize their experiential, uh, their experiences per unit of, of leisure time. And then the third big problem, which is not just for Hollywood, for everybody, is um, complexity in, in audience segments. So we, we heard a video app talk about demographic segmentation, demographic segmentation is the rule of the land, but actually a lot of literature to show that demographic segmentation is less and less predictive of, of uh, consumer behavior, especially when it comes to, to entertainment. Um, you know, uh, I have a, a six-year-old, a 14-year-old, and I'm, I'm 44 at home. We play the same video games, we watch the same show, we go see the same movie. Right? So, so this is a huge, huge problem. Um, there's half as, uh, you know, a little bit less than half as many demographic segments in DMPs as there are atoms in the universe. So there's a tremendous amount of complexity around audience intelligence. So it's a big problem, not just for Hollywood, but especially for Hollywood, because um, uh, there's just a ton. Of, the more content there is, the more segments you're going to have. Right? Things like sexual orientation, uh, uh, spirituality, that aren't traditional uh, demographic variables that aren't even, that there's actually very little data on it, um, play a bigger and bigger role. Um, so, you know, the, the very quickly, the reason uh, uh, there's increasing complexity in audience uh, uh, segments is that we've gone from, this is Maslow, E.R. Kivneys, I mean, some of you may, may, may be uh, familiar with this. So we've gone from trying to satisfy our most philosophical, most basic needs to uh, our, our higher level needs. And the higher level the needs that we're trying to satisfy, the more complexities there is around it, the less data there is around it, the more complex the models there are. So there's, you know, the, the amount of audience attributes um, is exploding. And that's causing a big problem for Hollywood. Uh, this is interesting, it's tangentially related. So if everybody's trying to maximize their experience level per unit of leisure time, then you see this very, very interesting phenomenon happening where um, every new uh, entertainment technology uh, becomes a feature in a higher level, more experiential entertainment technology. Right? So book to radio, to cinema, to TV, to video games, 
to VR, VR being the last entertainment product. There's never, there's not going to be another entertainment product beyond VR. You don't innovate past uh, photorealistic virtual reality. So every single entertainment product will fall into VR. There will never be uh, uh, another uh, entertainment innovation, uh, another entertainment product than VR. Uh, music didn't die because of Napster, although it helped. Uh, music died because it ceased to be a standalone entertainment product. It became a feature in a high level, more experiential uh, entertainment product, which was concerts. And this has happened across the entertainment, the, 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 the history of innovation in entertainment. And this is definitely causing a lot of concerns for Hollywood, although the VR, we can see that VR is going to be, um, is going to, to, to start a renaissance uh, in, in home entertainment in Hollywood and, and allow Hollywood to collect a lot more data because, you know, uh, they're going to collect data about every single one of, of our moves in, in VR environments. Um, so, I mean, so the problems, um, you know, uh, Hollywood isn't the, uh, you know, it, it is, is a little bit late to the data and analytics game, but it's catching up really, really fast. Um, and what we're doing at ETC is we talk to the CTOs of all the studios, so we have a very, very good handle on who's doing what. Um, so, um, I made this sort of uh, matrix. Um, there's a, a lot of push for new sources of data, uh, new methods, and new organizational models around data. And on the left, you see the rows are uh, the operational moments in, in you know, studio uh, value chain. It's development, production, distribution. So uh, going from left to right, uh, in development is, is the, 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 the uh, moment where you sort of develop content. You, you figure out uh, which script to buy, uh, which director, which talent to attach, et cetera, et cetera. It's where that is it's pre production. Um, there's uh, definitely a lot more sources. A video I've talked about OTT and, and, and all of the smart TV data is showing a lot of promise. Um, Hollywood is, is actually has not really broken into a lot of really, really good data sources uh, like Reddit and Tumblr in a, in a really good way, so they're really catching up to that. Um, uh, Fandango, which is owned by um, NBC Universal, um, is, is uh, a, a, you know, a really big source of data right now that they're trying to experiment with. Um, uh, and in terms of helping in the development, um, oh, and, and Ranker also is a really good uh, is a really good data set. If you can go to the Ranker talk, and there it's at four thirty. There it's a really really good data set on affinities. Um, so there's you know definitely applying new methods. Um, you know, Hollywood is, is hiring, you know, we see some of the booth with Warner and, and, and Netflix are trying to hire data scientists. They're being really, really aggressive with it. Uh, Disney, Warner, all of them are being really aggressive in, in hiring data scientists. They're really trying to apply um, early cutting edge semantic um, uh, methods uh, to look at, you know, script analysis. Um, uh, you know, I don't know if you're familiar, but can look it up. Uh, the first uh, short film written by AI just came out last month. Sun Spring was uh, uh, written by a, a neural network that been trained on tens of thousands of, of sci-fi sci scripts. It's actually a really kind of interesting movie to see. It makes no sense whatsoever, but um, but it's 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 kind of a novelty. Um, so you know. There is a very, very aggressive effort in Hollywood to catch up on uh, cutting edge data and analytics solution, um, including um, Affinity's graph for casting. Um, that's where data sets like Ranker, Facebook Audience Insights you know, work really well. Actually, people who like this actress also like these movies and vice versa. Um, they're starting to use it a little bit to cast movies. Um, they're applying game theory and decision sciences and, and even agent-based modeling. Uh, I don't know if you're really familiar with agent-based modeling, but it's, it's sort of uh, uh, creating these little AIs that make decisions based on maximizing their interests and there's a lot of reinforcement learning into it. And it's, it's a cool thing. And they're really uh, uh, starting to do it, which nobody really knows about. So they're really jumping the gamut and going to fairly aggressive, fairly cutting edge uh, uh, experiments in that field. 
Um, and then I'll, I'll talk about the new organizational models sort of in one big scoop. But in the, on the production side, that's really, really interesting. So there's a big push, and, and, and ETC uh, is actually a, a leader in that, in creating as much metadata programmatic, as programmatically as possible during the production process. Uh, this is you know, cameras directly, uh, manual logging by the crew, and there's, there's a huge effort in um, trying to create as much metadata and as many tags as possible uh, during the production and the shooting of the movie, which I think is going to be really exciting because then you can map that to a lot of, of audience intelligence data and a lot of you know uh, marketing and ROI data. So that's really exciting. That's happening right now. Uh, they're experimenting with it. There's going to be an explosion in those technologies in the next few years. Um, in terms of distribution, so it's obviously um, the low hanging fruit for a lot of a lot of studios. Right? Studios spent billions of dollars um, in marketing every year. Um, they they spend it really in, in a sort of in a spray and pray manner, where they're just like spraying it across the gamut of sources and channels. They don't really know. Uh, what works, what doesn't work, because they don't have very granular uh, ROI data on who's going to see their movies. So what we're doing at, um, at ETC is we're sort of trying to solve this problem. We're going to have a pilot uh, uh, going uh, in the next few weeks uh, with a company called Doorstatic that has a software that recognizes uh, gender, ethnicity, age, and mood uh, from security cameras to identify who's going to see a movie by, by gender and age and ethnicity. Um, you know, uh, there's definitely a big push in uh, applying you know, machine learning, predictive analytics, even you know, advanced AI um, for some studios um, to, um, to optimize market spend. Um, that's a big thing because they're spending so much money and, and they know they're losing about 40 to 45 percent of it. It's completely inefficient. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, in terms of organizational models, so this is really interesting. As you can imagine, it's the it's the main the main problem uh, is is that Hollywood is not does not have a culture of data. It's not have a quantitative culture. It's a culture of it's a culture of gut instinct, it's a culture of networking, it's a culture of ego, it's a culture of creative culture. So it's it's definitely, um, even in the marketing departments that are the ones that are the most receptive to data and analytics, it's, it's uh, definitely the biggest challenge for uh, uh, deploying data and analytics in Hollywood is, is uh, the organization. Um, and we'll look at how some studios are solving that. Um, so, very quickly, this is an example of, of, of what ETC is doing. We're applying decision, uh, decision theory and game theory to look at how people make uh, decisions to annotate themselves. And you look at the commitment in terms of cost. It's, it's cost versus available amount of uh, uh, available information. So the more costly uh, a, a, um, a piece of entertainment, an entertainment product is in terms of time, not necessarily money, but really time is the big thing, um, the more information you need to uh, ensure that you're going to have a good time. And this is why this, this uh, chart explains why we have blockbusters. Uh, this chart explains why scripts that are more high concept tend to do better in Hollywood than, than scripts that are less you know, high concept. Um, this, this shows why rom-coms aren't really making any money anymore, because people, you know, going to the movie is a big investment of your time. You want to make sure that um, that investment is, is done properly, just like investing your money. Um, so one thing that uh, my company is doing to help in that regard is, you know, we're uh, we're thinking that the world is going from um, segmenting by demographic to segmenting by psychographic to segmenting by story graphics. And what are story graphics? Story graphics are the stories that resonate positively and negatively with um, certain segments of the population. Everything is a story, right? Your 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 outfit's a story. Your your shoes are a story. Your laptop's a story. Everything is a story. Um, we think that demographic segmentation is dying, and the best, most efficient way to segment people is by the stories that resonate with them positively and negatively. In fact, if you look at the democratic the, the presidential primaries, 
Uh, the only way to really sort of explain the uh, Donald Trump and, and Bernie Sanders phenomenon, which transcended traditional demographics, was by uh, using story graphics. So this is a um, it, it, this is a platform that we're building called Contender for a uh, for a big uh, ad agency. And what Contender does is that it adds several layers of intelligence on top of traditional social media listening metrics and, and capabilities. Right, we're using. Um, we're putting a lot of thoughts in, in knowledge representation. We're putting a lot of thoughts in metadata augmentation. Uh, and and uh, we're building a lot more intelligence through it. And also, we're making it um, we're making it accountable through performance testing. So all the models are tested, and then the performance of the results are plugged into a model. I'm happy to give you more details about this, but it's 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 the first time uh, in in my knowledge that true AI framework is being applied to audience intelligence and audience segmentation. Um, this is interesting. We're using this as part of the platform. There's, there's a, a mathematical theory of why we think people and things and stories are interesting. It's by Jürgen Schmidt-Huber, is a, an AI um, engineer based in Switzerland. So the way the brain approaches new approaches people, uh, uh, stories, characters, is by compressing the amount of data it needs to approach the story. So if you are very, very, very familiar with a person, a story, um, your, your brain is going to compress the amount of data it needs to recognize that person, that story. If you're very unfamiliar with that uh, person or story or situation, uh, the, the brain is going to need a lot more data, so the big compression rate is going to be a lot less. It turns out there's an ideal ratio between uh, uh, in, in compression rates between what's known and what's new that really creates a pull for why people are interested. And it just, you know, this explains why marriages fail, this explains why Pixar is so successful. Pixar movies are about the same thing. They're about the same. There, there's two or three themes in Pixar movies, but every single one of these themes in every single one of the Pixar movies is being declined in a, in a, in a new way, in a very innovative way. So Pixar has found this ideal ratio between uh, the kind of story that really resonates with us at a very fundamental level and, and the amount of innovation in the storytelling and the character uh, uh, definition that gets us really interested. If it's too new, it's too, it, it's, it's too outside of our comfort zone. If it's too, um, too expected, it's boring. Um, Hull is using, starting to use neuroscience. This, was a, uh, this is actually a really interesting uh, uh, Experiment uh, at UC Berkeley that put people through fMRI machines, but and while listening to podcasts, and they were able to create a semantic map of the brain and look at which words belong to the same area of the brain. I highly encourage you to go and, and, and check this out. Uh, this is of, of, of high interest to, to Hollywood as well to sort of understand the neuroscience of, of why people um, like certain movies or certain stories or certain character characters versus others. Oh, this is a uh, along the same lines. This is the, the uh, an experiment that um, oops, sorry, that um, we constructed uh, a clip from brain activity. There's definitely a lot more research um, on this now, and and Hollywood is is paying very very close attention. to organizational frameworks, so I'll close on that, I'll take your questions, or I can keep talking. Um, so this is really important, right? Uh, this is the major, look, the, the, the problem is, I mean, the, the problem, you know, yes, the problem is the sources, um, a lot of the data that people use to, to, um, uh, to create audience uh, segments is just really bad. Um, video I've talked about, behavioral data. I highly encourage you to go to the Blue Kai Registry. Google Blue Kai registry, and Blue Kai is one of the biggest DMPs out there, and it's going to show you what Blue Kai thinks it knows about you, and it's a joke. Like it's, 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 and, and it's the industry standard. So there's really uh, uh, there's a lot of bad data, there's a lot of bad models, um, but the biggest problem isn't the data and the models. The biggest problem is the methodologies. I mean, you know, um, deep learning is out there. It's all you know, all none of these algorithms. Are uh, proprietary, they're difficult, the talent is difficult. It's hard to, 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 to create a talent pool to really leverage these new methods. Um, but the real challenge, 
the real chess is changing organizations. Always 150 years old. Um, it's got a culture that's radically opposed to a quantitative culture. Um, uh, so, uh, one studio does it, and I can't tell you which one, but you can probably guess. It's, big, it's a really big one. Um, one studio does it really, really well, and the way they're doing it is instead of creating a new silo with um, that's just in charge of data, right? So I've got development, production, distribution, data. They're creating data, uh, data, data insights team. That essentially, is part of all the silos. There's a resource for all the silos. That is a horizontal, uh, uh, functional uh, uh, capability that uh, creates data and insight products and, and consults with uh, every single one of the uh, of the silos in the studio. That, that's really, really really important. Um, that way it sort of transcends traditional politics. Um, traditionally in studios you have a lot of tension between the production side of the studio and the marketing side of the studio. If the film bonds, the marketing people will accuse the production people of making a bad movie, the production people will accuse the marketing people of marketing, marketing it improperly. So that they, you know, by creating a, a horizontal capability like this, um, uh, you sort of take the data out of of uh, those political battles and you make it really agnostic to any kind of functional area of the studio and you make it a, a real resource. The second thing that's really interesting, um, traditionally in Hollywood you'd have, you know, Star Wars The Force Awakens would go through, you know, would have a team that handles, manages the production of Star Wars, uh, then a team that would manage the, a different team would manage the uh, theatrical marketing of The Force Awakens. And then another separate team will handle the home entertainment um, uh, marketing of the Force Awakens. Um, that makes no sense. It's the same audience. It's the same people. So uh, Disney, for example, has created integrated title teams. It's the same team that is going to produce it and market it, uh, uh, whether it's theatrical or home entertainment. So it's a team that really knows its titles really, really well knows the audience for its titles really, really well, and they sort of, there's no discrepancy between one team and another team. It's the same team for each title. And that's really smart. That's a really good way of solving that organizational problem. Uh, and overall, if you think about data in Hollywood, what makes me, you know, it's, it's really a few good men, right? So you have, in my experience, you have sort of a handful of people per studio that are really, really trying to create this culture of data against everybody else who is extremely reluctant. So they're, they're making a lot of progress, and a lot of it is to the credit of um, the most senior executives of the studios, the, uh, you know, the, the Bob Ikers, for example, is a huge, huge, huge proponent of data. And so if it comes from the top, there's a big push at the top, you can tell the studio is, is, is going to do really, really well. But uh, we're still very early. Um, uh, you're still, sorry, we're still at the experimentation, experimentation phase, but from what I see in the conversation that I have in, in, in helping the studios sort of really accelerate this process, um, the kind of stuff that they're looking at, the kind of budgets that they're, they're freeing to uh, move into the data age uh, is impressive, and, they're, and they're, being, they're being really, really aggressive with it. I'll take your questions. Yes? I work for a, uh, a brand, and it's uh, dealing in wealth management, and ultimately uh, the, the millennials all the way to the oldest individual is starting some fashion of uh, acquiring retirement money or whatever. So my, my question is how to create, let's call it branded content, that really crosses over where you have both brand integration and content, but then other branded, you know, like the BMW content and this and that. So it really deals with ad agencies, branded content, and integration. Uh, so that's that's what this is addressing. Yes, that's what this is. You and say, you, I really, I really have many different uh, categories of how I can uh, address the client. I can go through celebrities, sports, uh, you know, uh, just you know newsworthy individuals, whatever, but how do you can activate a lot of different This will tell you which story for which segment is going to resonate the most. So from this, we could actually design the 
type of content we should be creating and the partnership we should be creating? Yes, this is the this is a content marketing engine, yes. So we should definitely talk. Yes. So are we moving away from formal bank or are we moving towards formal bank? And are we now passing instead of an executive taking the key for the block to explain, you know, the data department for, you know, mishandling the film or in other words, where does it enter into a type of thing where you get away from, you know, uh, you know if Hollywood is always showing valleys and never showing mountain cops. So how do you even know if, especially in VR and uh, surround uh, film projects and um, self-guided uh, storylines by consumers, these two types of technologies, how do you even, you know, get away from so that's, that's a, actually a really good question. Uh, a, a lot of the reasons why data analytics hasn't been used uh, more widely um, isn't that Hollywood doesn't understand it or they're dumber than everybody else. They're really, really, they're really, really smart people. They're very aggressive. They have a lot of money. The reason is uh, risk aversion. I mean, do you really want to test? You know, uh, a brand new modeling technique on your two hundred fifty million dollar temple movie. Does anybody really want to do that? So, so there's a lot of experimentation that is do, is is being conducted at the fringes, but it's they're starting to take real risks. Like Warner, for example. Warner is amazing in the way it's approaching this stuff. Um, and and to your to your question, right? That's a really good question. Are we going to have, you know, the what what, what I showed, uh, you know. This, this explains why we have superhero movies, right? So, but what's going to happen is that this is going to be, so something that I always tell anybody working in the movie business is that your audience is, has seen at this point, no matter what age they are, they've seen hundreds if not thousands of movies. Like you have to surprise them. That is the, that is the only way you're going to pull them in. And it goes, goes into this, right? It goes into, goes into this. Ratio of known to new. You can boil everything down to this. And this is actually what we're using for this platform. We're looking at brand brand stories and say, hey, this is the part of the brand story that people really expect so that we can have a higher brand recollection. And this is the part of the story where you guys can innovate. Um, it all boils down to this. At the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, just watch uh, Sunspring. Just watch the AI, uh, the movie that was that was written by Anna. This will show you really interesting stuff. So, so the AI has done a kind of a sort of a good job in, in capturing the structure of sci-fi movies. But really, what makes the movie interesting is the amount of nuance that was thrown into it by the cast. Right. So there's always this sort of human element of, of uh, you know, computers that are horrible with nuance. Right. And, what makes Sunspring interesting isn't really what the, the, the AI, the AI is actually kind of screwing up the movie. Um, what makes it interesting is how the cast has been able to, to, to create characters around that story. Yes? Sunspring? Sunspring, yeah. Yes? So, with the data available in Hollywood, obviously Netflix, Amazon, Google all have a lot more data. Yes. Yep. Yes. Or a writer or an editor, higher probability of success because you can get you can get my talent. I mean, you need to go talk to that level. Um, it's easier for directors and writers. Um, there's a lot more nuance in, in what makes a good writer than what makes a good director. Um, it's the good director attributes are, are a lot more structured than good script uh, good writer attributes. But there's some areas where it's going to make a big difference. I think we're seeing a lot of see a lot of like script analysis, you know, machine learning driven script analysis. Um, a, a lot of it is really crap. To be really honest, but it's going to get a lot better. And I don't think a script will. I don't think. We're going to see uh, a script, uh, AI or machine learning make a substantial contribution to script writing, um, you know, in in the next ten years. I mean, it's going to, you know, slowly go there. I think we're going to. It's really going to go through audience intelligence and audience attributes. Um, 
and, and identifying the kind of stories that audience, certain audiences want to see, I think that's more what's going to happen. Yes? Um, so production is getting more and more quantitative. That's that's something that you know I don't know about stunt coordinators, uh, but it's really the studios have a huge appetite for it. There's a lot of money that's being invested in creating metadata in the production process. So yes, below the line people are going to be really affected by it. Um, I mean, in a data way, right? Is it a good way or a bad? Way? Is math is math good or bad, right? Yes. Yeah, they took, um, they, they showed um, the clip that you saw on the left. So they, they showed that clip on the left to, um, to people, and then they recorded their uh, brain activity through functional MRI to the right. And they um, recreated images based on this uh, fMRI signals to see how close it was to the image that people would see. Yes? So there's words that are written on there. I guess that's the feeling that they're kind of. Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you.